So we have just got a call from the welder. So as you know, the boat's come out of the water and we were gonna be having some overplating done, which we knew, and we got a quote for. Um, the quote that we got was between, like best case scenario, 6,000 pounds. Worst case scenario, unlimited. Was it eight? Well, unlimited. No, best case was three grand. No. Because it was only gonna be along the waterline all the way across. Which is what we thought would probably happen, but the other quote was six to eight grand, and that was for from above the waterline down to the base plate, all the way around the boat. Yeah, so but that was a few months back. That was a few months ago. So he called, just called us now and said that the boat look, doesn't look good and it's likely going to need the welding from the whole of the what's it called? From above the waterline down to the base plate. Down to the base plate. All the way along. Which is what we try and what we didn't want to happen, but was all so that's going to be it, yeah. So that's going to be the max quote. But he also said that steel prices have massively increased. So he said you're probably looking at double. So at the moment we're thinking worst case scenario it might be like twenty thousand pounds. In which case I don't think. I don't think we can continue with the boat. Might this, to move off. this might be the like the end of its story. Now we're about rat day. Yeah, but it's just it, that is just wait, it's just too much money, and you know like that's our own fault. It comes with our own naivety of buying a boat that's forty years old. Um, but it's quite sad. So we're just driving up to the boat now just to have a little look at it. Oh, that's so um, tight. And he hopefully is going to give us a bit more of a like an estimate of how much it's going to cost. So right now he's just measuring up how much, like the, I don't know, measuring up all the steel around all the boat, yeah. and will be able to tell us a little bit more as to how much it's going to be. Um, so yeah. So you haven't seen it yet since you know you've seen the video yesterday or earlier where it just been jet washed down and you can see the boat out of the water but not since it's been sandblasted so we're going to go see that now so it'll look a bit a bit different I think. Yeah so we'll take you with us. Well, we're both just a bit sad. <laughs> People um oh <gasps> shit the fire brigade been called. Must have. Oh my god. I was in there. No. They're, they're out, they're stood around there. Oh, oh my god, I've um, Careful, right? Ooh, sorry. Well, it's not me, it's the old man. I know, but still. Oh. Is that going to explode? Might do. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, that's scary. Oh, that's scary. Well, 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 the come off, did it? No, I've cut them off. No, oh, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there's it, it, quite a lot of it, look. Yeah. And although some of them are sort of not okay, and some are I mean, sitting point of view, I, I would want to work, I mean, that's good steel, but from the point of view of look at that sitting and bad on there, like that side, lower down where the waterline is. I think to come up to here is going to make a nice neat job of it. Even if then we carry on with a strip. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so do you feel that on this side it doesn't necessarily need all the way to the base plate? Well... It's always going to be recommended. This, this, this was um, a conversation me and Paul had. <laughs> and, you know, if you're going to overplate one side, and not fully uh, not overplate the other the tires, side, then you've got no, more weight that side than this side, which I don't know, you can put balance and stuff around, but yeah, I mean, all day. Okay, so another problem. <laughs> we, as you might have seen, we, when we insulated the walls in the bathroom, behind all the tiles, we used spray foam, which obviously is sold as insulation, but basically it's 
we've just tested it and it's flammable. So really? when we lit it, it just like went up in flame. So the welder is concerned that obviously if he is welding onto the steel, the steel is gonna get really, really hot and the risk is it could go up in flames. Um, but we have put the insulation basically behind the bathroom wall, which is all tiled and fixed and watertight. So he recommends that we basically take that whole wall down, tiles included. And if anyone remembers, <laughs> tiling was not my favourite job. So the thought of taking it all down is just... Mortifying. Yeah. It's soul destroying, isn't it? Soul destroying. The other option is that we sign a disclaimer to say that if a fire does start, it's not his fault, which is fair. Like we're not going to sue him for starting a fire when he's warned us it might be dangerous. Um, but we're just trying to arm and arm what is the best thing to do. Like, do we, shall we take down, rip out, sorry. Shall we basically rip out the bathroom and start again? Or should we take the risk? I don't know. What we're doing at the moment oh, is... So much. Is a lot. We're just taking out the sink oh, away you. from the wall and just seeing if we can actually get to the spray foam from that angle to try and take it out. Yeah. Low, that's, see if that's it's possible. So much, though. That's going to be so hard to get out. That's... Like loads of loads of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just... You need something industrial to get that off. It's like rock. Against the, against the steel. Strong enough. You need like a scraper. The bathroom's gonna have to come down. Oh. I really think it is. We don't want to do that. <laughs> well, this is the other thing, Chloe, because. If we pull the bathroom down as well, along with paying for this welding, we're gonna have to pay to do the bathroom up again. Mm. We should start using the shower block again for a year. To you from inside the bathroom. I'm sat on the toilet, not actually on the toilet, but sat on the toilet. Chloe sat on a stool. And we've just had a good meeting with the welder, haven't we? Um, about all the welding we need to do and the issue is in the bathroom behind the sink and behind a wall that we've tiled about a meter's length we put spray foam insulation there and we thought that would be really good really um what's the word to look for like cost saving for like energy saving because that's supposedly the best thing to keep you insulated um for a narrow boat but turns out i mean have you got a light on you or a match or anything no like Turns out this spray foam stuff is really, really flammable. I mean, he barely put the lighter to it and it just went. <sighs> and so when it comes to welding, it's going to be very tough for the welder to not set this on fire. So, but the welding needs to be done. So what are our options? The options are just to, you know, take as much back as we can and just hope he doesn't set fire to the boat um but to, to get behind where all the spray foam is it's all tiled on a board um it's all pattern tiles so if you, you can't just knock a little bit out and replace it because it's all patterned so you know having to rip the whole wall out and we really don't want to do that it took chloe mostly a couple of months to finish this bathroom because the angles and the tiles and uh, yeah time with shifts and stuff so it took a very long time didn't it but and we've had a look behind the wall now so no so, so we're taking the sink away 
We've pulled yeah. the sink out, okay. we've disconnected the water, the sink's now on the shower, you're actually on top of the sink, and we're talking to you from the top of the sink, which is on the shower tray, so if you can figure out what that is. Um, and then, yeah, carry on. <laughs> we just had a look behind the sink now, and we can see all of the spray foam. There is quite a lot, and it is rock solid. Um, again, do you just try it? Yeah, it doesn't taste nice. <laughs> and it's really stuck to the steel, which is, which is concerning. However, we've had a little look and actually most of the spray foam is at the bottom of the boat. And the welder said that actually that's probably gonna be okay because he's welding mostly at the top and then right at the bottom on the base plate. Um, so we know 100% that there's no spray foam at the bottom of the base plate. So that's gonna be safe to weld. And then the top, um, we're gonna to need to scrape away. So he's put a little chalk line on the back of the board, which we can see that's where we need to remove all of the spray foam. But everything underneath that white line is- Should be okay. fine. So he's gonna weld from that above, isn't he? And then we just went outside to have a look at the outside of the boat because if you remember, we had some welding done last year, very, very small patchwork amount because we had a hole in the boat and it needed to be patched up to go back in the water. And I was sure that we had the bathroom done before yeah, yeah. that welding had been So basically, done. had he welded with had the he, spray had he done foam already there? And it was okay. And he wasn't sure, but we had a little look. The date of our survey was the 10th of August, and there is a photo of me doing the spray foam back in June. So that sounds like it was done. And then we just took out, took some spray foam out. And some pieces are like charred, charred or like, he wasn't, he wasn't sure whether it was just like rust from the wall, but sure, I did. But um, yeah, he wasn't 100% sure, but. Definitely looks burned. Yeah. And there's, there's lots of pieces as well. It's only the pieces in that area where he's welded. Exactly, because oh. it, it's just like a little block and it's only the pieces in that area that are charred. So he was saying as well, he said, well, that's really good as well. And actually it might help us that it's totally Excuse stuck me. to the um, steel because obviously when you're introducing heat, it's gonna catch fire if there's oxygen, but because it's so like rock solid, there's kind of not really any oxygen. He was saying it's probably, there's no oxygen. So it's just getting hot here and burning, but then it's not actually traveling through the rest of the spray foam, which is hopefully a good thing. Yeah, because so obviously think, the spray foam will have pockets of air in it and that's not what we don't want. It's just doing the hard surface where it's like got a layer of like toughness, hardness, mm. where it's dry, so then we might be safe. So I'm hoping, well our plan now is to scrape out as much spray foam as we possibly can above that line, but then to kind of take a, take a smaller calculated risk. Um, to, and just go ahead with the welding. I think we will probably have to sign a disclaimer to say that we take responsibility in case there's a fire, but it's less of a risk than just yeah, leaving that whole thing. It is what it is. And we didn't know at the time of spray foaming we were gonna need overplating. So we didn't really have the foresight of thinking, oh, let's not use something flammable. But then I was under the impression, you know, the Celotex or anything we thought it was insulation wise same. would be flammable to a point. Turns out this is apparently polished iron the worst. And, and apparently this is on par with polished iron. So it's just our naivety again, going through this. And we're learning so much. Yeah. It's all part of it. It is what it is. So next step now is tomorrow morning, the welder is gonna contact the steel yard and try and find out how much um, the quote is gonna cost. Be. Yeah. We're gonna need um, definitely six sheets of two and a half meters, potentially seven sheets. Five mil still, that is five mil thick. Yeah, so it just depends how much they cost. Yeah. Um, and then we'll go from there. So we'll see, we might not even be able to afford it, but we'll see. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs> we also just had to drill a hole in the bedroom to see what kind of insulation was behind it because those walls we haven't actually touched. We touched the wall behind here. This is all the bathroom stuff. 
We touched the wall behind here and found that it was like uh, veneer polystyrene wood. So we did actually originally get rid of all of the polystyrene and it's just the wood, there's no veneer, um, which is good. But then we needed to see what was behind the wood because again, we didn't know that. So we've actually used the drill with a hole saw to make a hole over here. This is behind the door, so that's good. And all that's behind there is ooh, this, this like fluffy stuff. And this stuff is not flammable. So that is all good and all safe. So hopefully, yeah, that'll be that. He's gonna, is that above? That's that way he's going to. I think that's cool, isn't it? The join. 